Hey, what's going on? This is the Body Punch Podcast, and my name is Naz. Let's talk about the results of UFC 258. From the bottom to the top, there are many interesting fights on this card. A lot of the fights you couldn't miss, you couldn't go take a break, because there's constant action going on during this fight card. A lot of people wrote some of the fights off and some of the fighters off and said that this wasn't an interesting card, but it delivered in many ways. I mean, you can just go through the list of fights that happened And some of the winners coming out of that fight, I mean, Bilal Muhammad coming out and um, defeating the Lima brother, Diego Lima. And Calvin Gastelum, we talked about it in the preview show, how high I am on his fight and him as a fighter. Alexa Grasso coming out with a big win. And then obviously the champion, Kamar Usman, retaining his belt and defeating his former training partner, Gilbert Burns, with TKO punches in the third round. I mean, let's just go into this fight right away. The Kamaru Usman and Gilbert Burns fight for the welterweight belt was an interesting one. In the previous show, we talked about how This will use many dimensions of MMA. We'll see striking, we'll see grappling, we'll see wrestling and, you know, wrestling, grappling, but we'll see many dimensions of MMA being used. But we didn't see much of that. We saw at the beginning, and this is when I was watching the fight, I thought in my head that whenever Gilbert touched Kamaru, it looked like it was having devastating effects on Usman. Gilbert looked very crisp with his stand-up. Kamaru at the beginning, I guess, had to brace himself had to compose himself. And that comes with that championship experience. Being able to compose yourself in the big moments when it looks like you're about to lose your belt. But he pulled something out. And it was smart game planning involved. Smart coaching by his new coach, Trevor Whitman, talking about pumping the jab. The jab is what made him a champion. And then also, in moments where Kamaru Usman got rocked, and he admitted himself, he, after the post-fight, in the post-fight press conference, he talked about how the, the cage was very slippery. And he was slipping all over the place. But then he also talked about how he got buzzed by Gilbert Burns. And it was that first flurry of shots where he got almost knocked down. It might have been a slip. If this was boxing... We would have had a definitive answer, but we don't get that in mixed martial arts. But in that moment, it looked like Gilbert Burns was about to win this fight. But Kamaru Usman composed himself, like I've said a couple times in this podcast now. And when he got the moment that Gilbert Burns was on his back, he took as much time as possible didn't jump on top of Gilbert Burns 
didn't try and do anything crazy, didn't back away right away to have Herb Dean step them both up. He stayed in that range, allowed himself to regain his strength, get his wits together a little bit. We don't know how much he was hurt in that moment, but he did the right thing. He took a breath. He took a second to figure out what his game plan is going to be now. And I was listening to Big John McCarthy's podcast that he does with the punk. And he brought up a very good point. He said that because Kamar Usman didn't engage Gilbert Burns on the ground, it shows us and it tells us what we should expect in their training camps. When they train together, we're going to assume from now on that Gilbert got the best of him on the ground. But then I think the other factor that comes in is what we just talked about. At that moment, Kamara Usman needed to compose himself, needed to, remember, needed to remember what the game plan was. And then execute it. A lot of those shots on the ground, I mean, they did bother Gilbert Burns. Those thigh kicks when he lifted his leg up and he kicked the back of his thigh. All those kind of little shots, they they were annoying, but they're not fight-ending shots. But then when the fight kept on going on, the main thing that the commentary team, everybody online, and most importantly, Trevor Whitman was talking about was Kamaru Usman's jab. We saw him switching stances and hitting him with that powerful jab. And this is nothing to take away from Gilbert Burns. I think we should remember that. This guy is a worthy, worthy opponent for that belt. And in my opinion, I think he was the toughest test for Usman. I mean, tell yourself this. This guy is an amazing striker, Gilbert Burns. He's a world-class jiu-jitsu practitioner. And he's been wrestling with Kamaru Usman and all of those killers down there in Florida. So we can assume that his wrestling is great as well. We've seen it in past fights. And all of these things, this guy's amazing at. And then you put this added layer that these two were teammates. That adds something to the soup. You put on top of it that this guy's an amazing fighter. And then on top of that, these guys were teammates. And Kamaru Usman got into the zone right away. By staring down Gilbert Burns and remembering that this guy wanted to take his belt. Still does. And still going to fight for it. But he had to remember that. But then at the end of the fight, Gilbert Burns was very emotional. Obviously, he... It, it must have been tough for him. And then... You could see the look in Kamar Usman's eyes that he felt bad for his ex-training partner as well. I mean, this, this must have been a tough fight for everybody involved. 
the coaches, the fighters, obviously, the teammates. This is a tough fight overall to take and to have. But, I mean, we just witnessed Kamaru Usman do something special. Now, people are talking about he should be higher up in the pound-for-pound ranking. He talked about it multiple times, how it's not a popularity contest. It should be the actual pound-for-pound greats, which (laughs) which is obvious. But where does he rank? I think what he's doing now with having zero losses in the UFC and going on this run of killers at this division. If you just look at his last couple of fights, I mean, this guy is just running through this division and he just got his toughest test from his ex-training partner who's a killer and ran through the division as well. I mean, let's just look at it. Obviously, he just fought Gilbert Burns. Before that, he fought Masvidal. Then he fought Kobe Covington. Got the belt from Tyron Woodley. RDA, Damian Maya. The list goes on. I mean, we see Leon Edwards here. Who he fought in 2015. And everybody's talking about how amazing Leon Edwards is. I mean, this guy is going on this amazing, spectacular run in the UFC. And the way that he's doing it, he's making it look easy. Not in this fight. This fight was Difficult. We got to admit that. He got put down. We saw a little bit of the way. We saw a little bit of the ways that we could see him losing. But then here's what makes him so scary. Is that he went into that moment, adapted to the situation. Listened to his coaches. And then, obviously, thought about it by himself. And then dropped him. And then ended it with TKO punches. Some people might say that the stoppage might have been a little bit premature. But uh, here's the best way I can tell if it was premature, obviously some fighters are concussed and they say that this, that the fight shouldn't have been stopped. But Gilbert Burns seems like he doesn't have anything against the stoppage. He was so emotional in that moment. It's tough to watch, but... The guy was also running through the the division as well. But it shows you how tough everybody from that camp is down in South Florida. It was an amazing fight. Great stuff to watch. And I mean, there's an numerous amount of fights that could be made but some of them are starting to turn into rematches after the fight Kamaru Usman called out Masvidal and talked about how there was only a couple day notice and with the full camp he would still defeat him even worse than he did before. And so there's rumblings of Kamar Usman and Masvidal 
fighting again, which should be a fun fight. I mean, that's one for the uh, for the fans right there. In terms of getting pay per view buys and all that kind of stuff, that that one is going to be fun for everyone. And then they're also talking about Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Oh yeah, by the way, they're talking about Masvidal and Kamaru Usman being coaches for the tough TV show. I mean, that would be fun. Originally, they were slated to have Kobe Covington and Masvidal. That would have been explosive. But I mean, if they still want to do this TV show, then I mean, Kamaru Usman right now without Khabib Namagamadoff might be up there in the in the top marketable fighters. I mean, you could put Adesanya and and John Jones, and you know, there's many marketable fighters. Don't get me wrong, but the fact is, is that this guy is exploding. People are starting to recognize. And I think that's the perfect type of fighter that you need for the tough TV show. Because on top of that, I don't know many people that watch it, even hardcore fight fans who still watch it. Now, it seems like ESPN is taking up the production of the TV show. So you might get a little bit more views. You might get some people that already have ESPN Plus who tune in to watch it. But you need that kind of middle ground, right? Like right now, Conor McGregor is so busy, you couldn't get him involved. John Jones is is turning into is a big star, sorry. <laughs> but Adesanya... He's a big star as well. You got to get that guy that's on the cusp of exploding, which I think Kamar Usman is, but not for the, I'm, I'm talking about the mainstream kind of audience. His skills alone are putting him up there in the greatest of all time category, especially in the welterweight division. We're starting to talk about him. I don't think you can say right away that he's better than George St. Pierre in his prime. He's got to get a couple more title defenses before we can have that discussion. And bringing up Kamar Usman fighting someone, there have been rumblings of Kamar Usman taking on some other opponents. And, I mean, it's just, like I said, it's tough to say. They've been talking about Khabib Namagamadoff. And, I mean, even that fight is kind of a stretch. Like, I think Kamaru would take that fight on no problem. But he's so much bigger than Khabib. And the guy doesn't have that much fat on him. I mean, I hear a lot of people saying that Kamaru doesn't have that much fat on him. But then I look at people like Yoel Romero, and there was an episode of the Joe Rogan podcast where they went into cutting weight in MMA and how having a higher, um, having more muscle fibers and less fat, it's actually easier to cut the weight. You guys can go find that podcast somewhere, but I thought it was an interesting one where the guest on the Joe Rogan podcast mentioned that having more muscle might be easier for cutting weight for MMA and boxing. So, I mean, 
the fight, it could happen, but is it the right one for Khabib to come back to? Such a tough fight. Such a tough fight. So, I mean, we'll look into it. We'll see. If it comes up, that would be great, but we're, we're all going to watch it. It's going to be a fun fight, but it's just, again, I'm, I've talked about this in a couple podcasts now, but the 165-pound division, a lot of people are asking for it. Some people are coming out on social media, coming out in interviews and asking for that 165-pound division. But imagine if Kamaru and Nurmagomedov could meet at the 165-pound division and become dual champs. These are some other people that would that would work for. It's like becoming a triple champ is easier when you're in a certain weight class. They talk about the Bantam weight to the 125 pound weight and then the feather weight. So those three divisions are kind of similar. What Adesanya is trying to do, we we can assume what he's trying to do is he has his belt, then get the 205 belt, and then maybe if, because he wants the John Jones fight at heavyweight, Maybe if John Jones has the belt at that time, then to fight for the heavyweight belt. There's a lot of things that go on in the sport, and there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we got to look into before we can make our decisions and whatnot. But let's talk about the rest of this card. So Macy Barber loses to Alexi Grasso. The the fundamentals that Grasso showed in her boxing, and then the amazing jiu-jitsu skills that she developed in the short amount of time that she's had, she she looked great. And her boxing, again, that's where the base is. That looked cr- clean, crisp. You could see the difference between Macy Barber and Grasso Macy Barber was trying to make this a bloody affair, make this kind of blood and guts war. But Grasso was going in there with fundamental boxing and really put it on Macy Barber. She came back in the last round and just with all of this fervor came forward. And, and Grasso, she looked good. She remained calm. That was the main thing. Macy Barber, I mean, this is another bump in her road. You know, the last fight that she lost and now this fight, she's taking it well. And she's still so young. The talks of becoming a champion might have slowed down a bit. And it's going to be tough You're going to have to take a couple more fights right away if you even want to think about becoming a champion before John Jones and get that youngest champion uh, thing that she's trying to get. It's going to be very tough. Very, very tough. Almost impossible. And uh, the last fight I wanted to talk about was the Kevin uh, Kelvin Gaslam fight against Ian Heinish. Heinish, he looked good. He looked in phenomenal shape. People were talking about how big he was for that weight class. Before the fight, Heinish was talking about how he's going to implement his wrestling. But the funny thing is, is that we all thought, and myself included, Calvin Gaston would go in there and put on a boxing clinic because of his phenomenal, quick, quick hands. But, I mean, this guy put on a wrestling clinic. Took Heinish to the ground, who some people thought was the better wrestler. But Calvin Gaston has been in there for a long time. And after that Adesanya win, I mean, this it, it puts him on a higher level. 
And this fight was not a must win because he's going to get cut or anything. But it was a must win because he just needed to get back on track, feel what a win feels like, and yeah, just get back on track. He did what needed to be done. You don't want a guy going in there and doing something that just doesn't make sense and not get the win over just doing what he feels is right and using that wrestling to take down his opponent. And he talked about it before the fight too. I mean, he talked about how he's been working with his girlfriend, who's his uh, strength and conditioning coach, and then working on his wrestling. So we should have assumed that Kelvin would be using his wrestling and he showcased it against a very tough guy. Very tough guy. I mean, Heinish is no joke. And then on top of that, if you're Heinish, you've seen Kelvin Gaston fight for a very long time. You've watched a number of his pay-per-views probably or just his fights alone. And when Bruce Buffer calls your name and then you stare down and then you got Kelvin Gastelum staring back at you, and all of those other fights, which obviously doesn't happen inside of the octagon. But you start to think about this guy has been in wars with everybody. Knocked out a bunch of people, took, you know, taking out people left, right, and center. So I think that added to the loss for Heinish. But it was a tough win. He got it done. Calvin Gastelum uses wrestling phenomenally. But uh, again, overall, this is a fun card. A lot of fun fights. And we see the greatness of Kamar Usman composing himself after getting knocked down a couple times and then coming back and using that beautiful jab to get it done. So thank you again. Thank you for listening to this podcast. If you guys could like, subscribe, Hit the bell notification on YouTube. That'd be really appreciated. If you guys could listen to the podcast on the different podcast platforms, that'd be amazing. If you could follow, get five stars, all that good stuff, that'd be great. Thank you again for taking the time out of your day to listen to me talk. This has been the Body Punch Podcast. My name is Naz. Bye. 